Hi everyone, Sleepy Soul here, and in today's video we're going to cover the the trials and tribulations of what is the most fascinating buyout uh, I've ever seen, where there's been no comment about from any insiders, and that is Paramount Global's potential buyout merger, something reverse uh, dilution Scott with Skydance or potentially another suitor, uh, and, and we're going to talk about the roller coaster ride that this stock has gone on. Sherry Redstone and some Hollywood backstory in general, and, and in general, talk about like kind of what I think is going to happen next. As usual, if you guys like these videos, click the like and subscribe button down below. We're almost at 500 subscribers. That's when YouTube starts acknowledging you as a real channel, uh, and they, they think they call you a real boy. Uh, so we're pretty close. So click that click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, so real quick, we're going to do some backstory here, and then we'll get into uh, the kind of investment thesis on Paramount, and then we'll get into uh, uh, the future. So there's some timestamps down below. Click those if you don't want to hear any of this part, but the backstory is pretty important. So Sherry Redstone is the daughter of uh, Summer Redstone. Summer Redstone basically created CVS and Viacom or was a major player in the creation and um, expansion of those. Uh, Summer thinks Sherry's an idiot. That's a very key point. Summer's now passed away. Uh, but um, Sherry, he probably thinks she's an idiot because she kind of is, and we'll get to that in a second. But the real timeline of where Paramount has, has caused issues and, and why it's been a headache for investors is this battle she had with Les uh, Moonves. And Les is, was the CEO of, of CVS. Um, and this was during CVS's heyday of, you know, million NCISs, a million CSIs, Hawaiian 5.0 was a big show for them. Um, they had that show with the dude from Lost uh, where they would capture villains. I mean, they were all like villain of the week shows and they just did fantastically. And Les was very competent, confident. Uh, and uh, really, uh, this is obviously back in 2016 when this started. And this is a long article from The Wrap about, you know, when like when Bob Baggage was this current CEO of uh, Paramount got hired and, and, and how he's been basically a patsy for Sherry forever. Um uh, but but Les basically understood very clearly in the mid in the late 2010s that linear TV was not long for this world. But on the other hand, there there could be a graceful decline for it if you managed your debt load uh, and and kind of gracefully exited the scene. Sherry wanted to be more aggressive. Um, and, and it culminated in this massive fight. Uh, what ended up happening was Sherry was able to find some dirt on Les. Uh, he had some Me Too allegations that even in the even in the uh, uh, the the, the the, the the apex uh, uh, or the pinnacle of the Me Too movement because this was this was about six to nine months after the Harvey Weinstein allegations. Um, even people in the industry were kind of like, "Hey, these allegations against Les were, are pretty flimsy at best, given that he's a massive TV exec and he interacts with people all the time of every gender, race, and nationality, and no one has had a problem with him before outside of these three people." But it was enough for the CBS board to uh, dissuade his. Uh, disapproval of the merger between then Viacom and CBS and allow Sherry to basically take control via her national amusement uh, company, which is the company that Sh Summer Redstone created that he really didn't want to give her because uh, he thought she was an idiot. Um, that culminates, this battle culminates with this massive uh, PR uh, campaign that Sherry runs and ends with this uh, New York Times massive uh, story where she, uh, you know, she's now in charge, basically. You know, her father darted her march of her career. Les Munez launched a bit at CVS to overrule her. That was before the sexual misconduct allocations came to light. Now Sherry Redstone controls the media empire. And this was, you know, written a year ago. Like, again, like th th this is this she's been uh, Sherry's very good at one thing, and that's making the media feel like they have access to her and then them giving her fluff pieces. Um, that has not meant there's been a good response uh, in terms of the stock price. I mean, she basically really started controlling the empire in 2018, 2019. Uh, and the stock was at about forty five dollars a share. We can really ignore a lot of this run up because that was the Bill Huang um uh, 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 gamma squeeze that uh, was eventually ended his career when 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 Viacom issued more shares. This was the former stock Viacom. This is Paramount Global now. But again, under her tenure, we went from a fifty dollars share price to about a ten dollars share price. Okay, so this has not been good for shareholders. And there have been shareholders like Mario Garabelli. I think I'm pronouncing his name uh, correctly. He he's been a shareholder of the A shares for 
I think it close to a decade now. Um, you know, these, these are not people who are just like throwing their money away and are just retail investors. And I mean, you look at this, like every time it broke above the 20 week, it, it just, it immediately collapsed. Like these are not, this is not a company that looks like it has any positive inclinations. And again, this is a five year chart. So you're looking at some 2016, you're looking at something that basically hugged the 20 week and outside the Bill Huang blow up has, has basically sold off every time it gets there. So, you know, great. Uh, hold on one second. I don't even know this. So it's basically sold off every time it's got there. I don't know if you guys just heard that last part, my my OBS cut out for a second. So, uh, you know, it's not been a fun company to own. And, and, and one of the reasons it's been weird is because, again, much like the Ford company where the Ford family needs the dividend to survive, again, there's, there's a high likelihood that the National Amusements Enterprise, which owns not just uh, Paramount shares, which they own 10, roughly 10% of the shares of, so it's about 700 million, um, it, they, they also own some ancillary movie theaters and some other product that is relatively worthless or close to valued very the very cheap valuations and there's a, there has been rumors that it is an entity basically close to bankrupt in terms of their their not uh, their liquidity needs uh, so if it wasn't for the paramount uh, dividend they would be they would have to force fire sale some of their assets and given that their really only asset is these paramount shares and the majority of them are these voting shares uh, that would be a big problem because sherry needs them because again if you if you take less Moore's world, uh, less move as Moon Viz's world for it, uh, Sherry's not very competent, and that was backed up by words her father said. Uh, it, she was just able to to create a media storm to get him out of power. Um, now, before we go into before we go deep into uh, um, uh, Paramount and how it's valued, and if we should buy or sell it, and what what I think is going to happen next, I want to take a quick moment, literally very quick. Hollywood is the second worst thing to invest in after airlines. There have been million or not millions, hundreds of companies that have bought into Hollywood and have blown up their balance sheet because they are funding something in Hollywood. AT&T cut their stock price in half because they bought Time Warner for, I think, what, $87 million, uh, billion. AOL is gone because they merged with Time Warner. In fact, Time Warner still owns pieces. I know I think sorry, they sold off pieces of AOL to Verizon for like $4 basically. Um, and again, you know, again, it closed the uh, again, AT&T bought it for 85 billion uh, and then Time Warner uh, uh, was 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 before in at AOL. Uh, sorry, sorry, so not AOL. AT&T and AOL. It's always a company. So their, their history is littered with with companies that have bought into the Hollywood dream and um, not been able to see, be successful, and because of that, that they've they've run their company into the ground. And you see that with AT and T and and AOL right now. Um, so let's start with the valuation of Paramount. So Paramount has a lot of debt. In fact, the debt's about two thirds of the enterprise value right now. We'll get to why the market cap's fallen in a second. Uh, the market cap is probably on fairly low right now. But one of the reasons there's a lot of bullishness on this is that, oh, their average weighted debt, with the exception of some of these longer tenured pieces uh, that these Vi that Viacom has issued, um, uh, you know, longer tender pieces, really, they're all around, the weighted average debt load is like 3.8%, right? You kind of you can kind of just see that when you see these. There's not a lot of high yield debt. And again, but if you look here, Again, CVS, most of the short-term debt is CVS until you go way out here to 45, right? So that was, less. Les Moonves was very conscientious of, hey, we don't need to issue a lot of debt because the goal is to eventually pay off a lot of, the, a lot of debt, become basically cash flow free, buy back stock, and kind of do, become a, be, let, do a non-leveraged, excuse me, non-leveraged buyout of your company where you just keep paying shareholders the earnings until the earnings go to zero, right? That was less as, in theory, his eventual plan at CBS. Uh, Sherry wanted to supercharge uh, uh, growth via this combined entity, and she ended up winning, uh, again, due to the sexual misconduct issues. Um, but one of the things that the bull case doesn't get is that, yes, this debt is at, valued at, at, uh, as an asset because the majority of it's below the Fed fund rates. That is true. The downside of it is, though, the majority of cash flow from Paramount comes from the linear TV, which is the CVS side, which is the very much non 
long-term profitable side. What I mean by that is if in five years, will CBS have enough, uh, will CBS have the same amount of earnings to uh, then as it does today? In 10 years, where will their earnings and free cash flow be? And if those numbers are going to deteriorate, let's just say at like a, a small rate, like like three to 5% a year, that means you have to cut three to 5% of staff per year or, or cut, uh, um, or cut some other uh, uh, input cost. Otherwise, it's going to eventually squeeze your margins. So if revenue keeps going down by three to five percent a year, even if we lower it to two percent a year, that two percent de- negative flow to revenue could, in theory, be a ten percent uh, negative flow to op income. De- again, depending on the on the puts and takes of the balance sheet and the levers you can pull, and that means you're going to have less cash to pay off the debt. So the debt isn't as much of a value because it's attached to a slow leaking ship if this was just like apple's debt or hell um coinbase's debt where coinbase is like hey we're going to be in existence in 10 years in some fashion because bitcoin's probably going to be around in 10 years and we can show that because we've been around for the last 10 years and we have all this growth that there would be a much more compelling argument that this debt is valuable so i'm not saying this debt is a zero or a super negative obviously all, all that's kind of a negative just by the fact that it's debt it's on the right side of your balance sheet but as a bull case of like, oh, people, someone could buy them as a take private because of this debt asset, it's not as compelling as retail investors would like you to believe. Now, where are we today and how do we get here? So I just wanted, that was kind of a little bit about Paramount. So in February, or not February, in December, uh, Fabers comes out with a report and basically says, hey, um, National Amusements, which is the controlling entity, it's it's the Redstone entity uh, that controls Paramount, that is kind of up for sale and the deal might be done with uh, David Ellison and also uh, they're going to do a mer- like basically a SPAC with with the holding company the the the, the pre the pre SPAC company being Paramount and they're going to Paramount's going to buy Skydance for 5 billion dollars and then issue a bunch of debt or issue a bunch of shares to for reasons basically and you can see right on the chart, basically, when this comes out. Um, where is it here? Uh, it gets announced in December, and it's basically been downhill ever since. Like, like it was, I mean, again, talk about above the 200 week. Um, you know, let's go to the three month calendar. Bear with me, guys, one second, trying to make this look pretty. Um, you know, again, like it was announced. And the stock in December, and the stock price basically has gone nothing but down ever since. It's popped a couple times. Um, I don't know why the one why we have the one hour calendar or one hour here, but uh, it, it's been it's been not pretty um, uh, since since again uh, since then again you see that really 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 bad candle and it's been down ever since. So he comes and and the real thing that gets people confused is the dilution. Like why are you diluting? Uh, you know again. Uh, they have a dual share class here. So the ones that most retail investors buy are the para shares. Para A are the voting shares and they're valued. They've barely moved uh, since December uh, where para, the non-voting shares have just collapsed. So everyone's like, why are you diluting? You know, also somewhere in this, it came out that the Redstones were going to get a $2 billion uh, basically kicker. Like it was just like, we're going to buy your shares for the at market price. And then here's an extra $2 billion. So everyone's like, okay, that can't be real. Like that can't be the only deal. And then Favors has been banging the table saying, like, not only is this real, like, this is the structure of the deal. Like, this is happening. Like, you all are listening to this thinking, like, I'm crazy and I'm not. And, and in fairness to Dave Favors, he's been always a straight shooter. He, he he reports things as is and he moves on. Like, he's not he's not trying to screw anyone over, though people get ang- people have always gotten angry at him on both sides. But he's just like, hey, this is the this is what I'm hearing. I have credible reporting on this. I, I, I will not. You know, say anything randomly. So again, this was this was December 11th. Okay, so that comes out, and then it's kind of radio silence till early March, and then you start hearing Apollo was sniffing around. At one point, the BET uh, executive was like, "Hey, I'm going to buy Paramount for 30 billion dollars," but that was that was a farcical uh, event. The thing with Hollywood investing again is is because it's Hollywood, everyone. It leaks everything to the media because the media is just like, oh, we love Hollywood. So um, uh, the only other interesting thing that happens is on April 3rd, which is Wednesday, it, and this big candle right here, you guys can see it. Uh, Apollo comes out and says, hey, 
so they, it leaks to Bloomberg that Apollo put a $26 billion all-cash offer in front of Paramount. Now, Paramount's argument is uh, – Paramount's argument has been that they have no funding source and there might be also some antitrust issues, which I don't think are super pertinent given that it's a TV channel issue. So uh, it might just have – Apollo might have to divest like a billion dollars worth of it, but it's not enough to, to scuttle the whole deal. But long story short, the interesting part of what happens is the day after that Apollo letter hits, uh, Skydance and um, uh, uh, um, uh, Paramount and the Redstones go into a exclusive 30-day negotiation window where Paramount has put together a special committee to uh, see if the deal gets offered. Now, this special committee is very – hold on, guys. Sorry. I don't know why. Sorry, I apologize. I don't know why my OBS is acting up. The special committee is very interesting because half of the board is basically Redstone's lackeys. I mean, it's literally her personal lawyer, a good friend of hers from Sony, and someone else. And a, uh, four of the board members decide to to leave, um, uh, 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 exit, three of which were on the special committee. Um, as of their 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 uh, June June earnings call or June um, uh, uh, what's it called investor day. So then they obviously again like they, they the the deadline article mentions it right there. Klinger is Redstone's attorney, uh, and then Skelman, Ofstra, and Terrell are said to be on the special board committee Paramount created to evaluate a Skydance deal and make sure it's fair to all shareholders. So there's this like kind of nasty smell coming from Paramount of like, hey, you you panicked. Again, David Favors has said this national amusement buyout by the by David Ellison, who's Larry Ellison's son, is all but done. He said it's 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 basically done. Like they just need to figure out how to work the deal where where Paramount would buy Sky Skydance, right? So so that's like that's in that rumor, right? So so you gotta understand that's some of this what is happening? That's in some of this backstory. So with that as a backdrop, you then have this special committee that was created right after they panicked and put a 30-day window uh, to to basically kind of strong-arm Apollo out of this picture. And then also now suddenly Sherry Redstone's lawyer and three others who, again, are friendly, two of which are friendly towards Sherry and one probably third party, are, are like, hey, we're done with this. Like we have to leave, so it's leave. It left the investors with this impression that, like, much like when. The, and so there's some more backstory here. Uh, CBS and Viacom, when they merged, they both had special committees, and I'm putting special committees. You guys can't see me. I'm putting it in quotes because, like, they weren't special committees in terms of like they knew they knew they had to get to the merger. Like it was just figure out how to get it so that they wouldn't get sued. So the. The, the, the special committee for Paramount is kind of viewed as a rubber stamping by by c- the cynical view, I should say, of this is that they're viewed as a rubber stamping entity. Hedge funds that own Paramount, which is there, there are numerous ones, are not taking this sitting down. Uh, Barrington Hedge Fund urged Paramount to scrap talks with Skydance. Uh, there was a couple other. Mario Garibaldi's basically said, hey, listen, if, if Sherry's because, again, Sherry's majority of um, uh, majority of the. Uh, um, National amusement shares are Class A shares because they own, they control the voting rights. Mario Garabelli's shares are also Class A. So uh, if Mario has put a letter out that says if Skydance is offering a premium for the um, Class A shares of uh, uh, of National Amusement, he better be damned, uh, and Allison better be damned, be backing up that truck for my Class A shares, or I will be suing. And and long story short. Because this isn't a merger, so Sherry was able to get through this the CVS Viacom self dealing issues with. I mean, they literally had to settle. They, they got sued in Delaware and lost a court case. But she was able to get through that because it was you were it was still two publicly traded entities. No one like National Amusements made out a little bit better based on the structure of the deal and how the the A shares were divvied up. But like it didn't really screw really anyone over too badly. If she tries to walk away. With hey, I'm getting two billion dollars for my shares that are really worth about seven hundred ish million. Also, you're getting 
you, the new entity of the person who now owns the national amusement shares is going to turn around and dilute existing shareholders to buy Skydance at a what at a high private valuation of five billion dollars, which again has not gone down since it went since the last valuation round. But meanwhile, Paramount over the last five years is down eighty percent. You're going to have actual lawsuits like, hey you're not going to be able to get this deal closed at all kind of lawsuits. So the board members leaving is kind of a sign that like maybe Sherry's telling them like this needs to happen. And they're basically saying like the only way this is going to happen is without our signatures. So there's that. Um, the wrap, which you guys can read via Yahoo Finance, um, the wrap sometimes paywalls their stuff, so that's why I pulled it from Yahoo Finance, had this massive article they published on April 9th, which was uh, last Monday or Tuesday. Um, uh, you know, again, uh, kind of reiterating a lot of things I've already said. You know, if Redstone attempts to move forward with a Skydance deal against the recommendation of special committee, lawsuit from shareholders get nasty and expensive. Stefano uh, Bonabi, Bonani, uh, an associate professor at finance, said... Um, uh, you know, the, the, the matrix or matrix, which owns, uh, 355,450 or 45 parent shares has over a billion in assets penned a letter basically saying the Skydance business was on, uh, suboptimal. The problem is going back to the share price, right? The market cap seven billion. The enterprise value of this company is about twenty billion right now. Apollo was offering basically a thirty percent premium, so they were saying, "Hey, our B share, your B shares are worth about seven seventeen ish dollars. Your A shares are worth twenty something. So there's the premium for getting the voting rights, and then we're going to buy the debt, and that's a solid bid. Okay, it doesn't get you much past the price that December was trading at, but that's a solid bid." If Skydance is going to say, hey, we're going to buy Sherry Redstone's account trade shares for $30 a share, which again is a higher valuation than $26 billion enterprise value, but only Sherry's share, and then we're going to dump the, more public shares to fund the Skydance merger, like that's not going to end well. Now, if Skydance turns around and says, hey, we're going to give we're going to basically swap Skydance for, Dan for for Sherry's shares. Also, we're going to be, let's say, dilutive in the sense that we're going to issue 20% uh, uh, new shares at $45 a share, which our shareholders are going to be required to buy in at. And that's going to be a $5 billion debt pay down enterprise value thing, where now suddenly my B shares are really should be valued at closer to $14 or $15 because the enterprise value is now closer because now we have cash on hand is now closer to 25, 20, like 24 to 25 billion. Like, and now I'm a public and I'm still in publicly, uh, uh, public, uh, shareholder and there's potential upside there again it's Hollywood there's not really ever potential upside in any Hollywood stock um, but that becomes a little more compelling and that's something where like if Matrix wanted to sue them or Barrington wanted to sue them they would not be able to because the deals would be close enough in parity to to make that make the numbers be like okay we took a slightly worse deal for shareholders today because we think the longer term value is correct and and that'll hold up in court i want to be very clear so again see again it's matrix has said it's especially galling that paramount's independent committee has not seriously considered the 26 billion cash offer apollo made on march 31st including the assumption of debt again so the the third they're all upset because the 30-day window with skydance okay uh, uh where, where's the stuff um you know uh see again apollo's current offer is more than the entire market cap of paramount global which currently around really 7.6 plus the valuation again it's about 21 billion dollars all in um you know you know the argument is that they haven't done due diligence by the same because because their argument for blocking the apollo letter is that apollo hasn't done due diligence on them and skydance has and then the argument that they haven't done due diligence but the same token is a self-fulfilling prophecy because you haven't given the opportunity to do due diligence i don't think anyone could question their ability to do a deal this size therefore to pull the rug out from under them before they even have a chance to dig in seems extremely inappropriate again apollo is a real bidder this is not like them and KKR and and uh, you can you can make another uh, you know what is it A16 is the other one uh, Anderson uh, Anderson Horowitz I think is the other uh, like like these are big firms like uh, you know Bain they can do deals of this size it's not these aren't like small things uh, like these aren't like 
I like 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 Matrix or Barrington, these hedge funds that no one's ever heard of are just like, whatever, we want to buy Paramount. Like you have to take Apollo seriously because they're a serious player. So, you know, this was this was the this was the kind of this has been Sherry's been leaking to the media via proxies that the reason she's picking Skydance is because they're paying her the most money. No, it's because David Ellison cares about Hollywood and the media industry. He's more than just numbers, and that matters to Sherry. And they've also indicated they're not in favor of breaking up the company, which many just assume that they should, the insider added. The the problem is, again, and again, it just quotes this in the article, Sherry is potentially exposing the Paramount to shareholder lawsuits. It would be very easy to argue if they had an independent committee to say, wait, pause, you need to gather all offers and all possible information to make sure that deal you approve maximize the value for everyone, says Benetti, the financial professor, professor, and you decided to ignore it and thereby you determine a loss for shareholder or financial damage, which exactly what a shareholder class action lawsuit is. The problem is, and this goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video, how national amusements might be functionally bankrupt in the sense they don't have any operating, like positive operating cash flow. If Sherry needs this money and she needs serious amounts of capital, it's going to be very difficult for her to get this money quickly if this is the deal they present, okay? And if, if this is the deal presented and you add in the fact that the board members are resigning, you add in the fact that the, the, the stock price is in the toilet and it's going to likely go down and it's gone nothing but down on this deal, it's going to be tied up in court for no less than a year. You just like, it's just not going to happen quickly. And in that time period, she is not going to see a cent. There's high likelihood Paramount will have to cut the dividend again, probably to zero. So now she has no new income coming in. She has these assets that are depreciating or, or devaluing because again, Paramount is not well run. It's going to continue going down. So at the end of the day, She's going to have to take these legal threats seriously because it could be end with something where not only is she paying damages for shareholders, and it would be – if depending on how this deal is structured, it could be national amusements paying because it's she's the, the chairman of the board self-dealing basically. So it causes all these issues, okay? So anyways, we come to today on the 18th. Favor said something very interesting this morning. Hold on. <coughs> Apologies, they didn't want to cough into it. Favor said something very interesting this morning. He said, hey, uh, the 30-day window expires May 30th. There is very, 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 very unlikely that the two the two sides, Skydance and Paramount, will reach a deal by then. C C B CNBC David Favors reports. The deal is not dead, however, as the two sides can continue discussions just without the guarantee of exclusivities. Favor added that more many analysts analysts did not expect the companies to come to a final agreement by the deadline, but and there should be more twists and turns in the process. Favors also uh, reported that, and again, Skydance is starting their started their due diligence on Paramount this week. So this is this is why you're getting new leaks this week because Skydance is actually like oh, the books have been the Komodo has been opened and they're going deep into it. Favors has also reported that Skydance believes it can realize three billions of savings through cost cutting should the merger go through. Paramount sale sale, sale is also facing major issues. Sherry Redstone is opted to sell only. Uh, uh, is opted to sell only her stake in National Amusement, um, and the and again this is Mario Garabella saying uh, uh, he'd rather the sale not go through if it uses Redstone's po proposed structure. But Faber's not quoted in this article. Faber's did say it was the or he did indicate kind of later in the discussion. Uh, I don't want to play any CBS videos on my channel, so I don't get a copyright hit. Uh, or CNBC, excuse me, not CBS. I'm, my brain's a little addled. It's 9:30. Favors did say that uh, part of the problem is that Skydance is having with the deal is they cannot figure out a way to monetize B shares. Again, Skydance wants to come in by Ellison wants to come in by National Amusements and then basically force the public facing shareholders of Paramount to eat a turd sandwich by reverse merging Skydance public and take care of his investors with Skydance. That has been the proposed structure since last December. It's why the, it's why the Paramount share price has just been plummeting. Okay. Since then the, you have this, these um, hedge funds waiting in the wings, like with lawyers at the ready, like the moment this deal even like remotely leaks, they're going to hit the, they're going to hit uh, the Delaware court system. And he now knows that. So the the hitch on this, why the Skydance deal is going to exit the exclusive window is because uh, they can't figure out a way to reverse merger Skydance into Paramount at, at Skydance's proposed $5 billion valuation, which again, 
is just two billion less than than Paramount's, even though you know the Skydance last valuation raise I think was in 2021. So you know they should have had some value destruction there, but Ellison doesn't want to realize the loss on that. So fine. But he also cannot take care of B shareholders unless he forces his investors to buy in at like something like I said, like insane, like forty-five or fifty dollars a share. Also, while taking care of Sherry, like you can't do all of this without spent without basically just buying the company. It, it literally becomes cheaper to just buy the company or close to it. I mean, obviously, not really. You're you, you know, it's 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 a liquidity issue. Like you're spending four billion dollars, or you're spending ten billion dollars to buy enough of the company so you control it and it's a public entity versus twenty-five to thirty billion dollars to take the company private, right? Like it, it, it you know, six and one half dozen the other. But it's it, it there's a liquidity reason why you want to do it the way Skydance is doing it. But it does the math doesn't work. The math does not match without ending in lawsuits and again sherry does need to be cognizant of this if the people talking about how uh sh she's out of money are correct okay so last thing as i was recording this video news hit that sony was in talk to buy paramount i can't unfortunately i can't read the article because i actually hit refresh on this page so i'm sorry guys um uh, sony's in talk to buy paramount with Apollo, it sounds like their bid's going to come in even higher at 26. But Sony's going to take the parts that would clear that would make Apollo an issue for uh, antitrust issues. They're going to take those segments uh, probably at a reduced valuation. And Apollo wants the the movie theater, uh, the movie uh, production studio, because they basically are going to just make content for. Uh, they'll probably roll Paramount Plus in with Netflix and Amazon and then just create content and sell it, which is basically what Sony does. And Sony does that profitably. It's a good business model for Sony. Um, so I don't know where that goes, but my guess is this deal is going to hit May 4th. And as of recording this video, the stock price is up 11%. So... Stock has done very well after hours uh, because this bid is hit. Uh, my guess is and my sense is, so where do I think this is going? Um, I think if you go long here, and again, it really could be here up to the $12 mark. If you can go long sub $12, which is roughly where it is, it's at $12.20. But if you can go long even on the open on Friday, April 19th, which is when this video is going to get published, you're, if the Skydance deal does not get accepted, as it was reported back in December, you're likely going to see pretty material upside here. You're likely going to see a stock that goes to 14, 15, 16 dollars. That's and then I mean quickly, like we're going to talk in the next two months. So your IRR on that, let's just say it goes to 14 and you buy at 12 at 12 uh, 50. So you're seeing roughly a dollar, uh, about 13 uh, percent uh, uh, increase in stock price. Um, in between, you know, let's call it now and end of June. So that's two and a half months or put another way. It's, it's about an IRR of, uh, about close to 60%. That's if it happens quickly. And I mean, again, I don't really care if like, you should look at this, like you don't really care when the deal is done. I think, I think this thing sees 15, $16 by July. Um, in fact, I have a risk reversal on this for I'm now going to be in the money as of tomorrow uh, for the for the downside. Uh, I sold 12 puts to buy uh, 15 calls. Um, I sold 12 puts for June and bought 15 calls for for July. So uh, and they weren't a one to one. It was a two put to one call sale. Uh, so I'm you know I'm plus money if if everything expires worthless. Uh, so I think I think this thing will see $15 by July. And I'm saying that with with you guys having now having the full knowledge of um, me uh, having some ownership stake, but it would stun me if this thing gets sold for less than 17, which was the price it was at se when the, the news leaked um, in December. If this thing gets taken private, so I think 17 is like the minimum. If this thing gets taken private by Apollo and Sony or some other entity. If this thing is a still a publicly traded company, I think you're looking at 14 to $15. So I think either way, there's upside. I think it's going to be very painful upside. Sherry Redstone is an idiot, and I want to be very clear. I've never thought she was very smart. And I'm not just saying that because I'm dealing with this now. I I literally, my first two 10-baggers were Pixar and 4Kids Entertainment. I hate Hollywood in terms of investment, but I've done I've had amazing trades in them in the past. I also blew up my account buying uh, the AOL Time Warner merger. That was, that was a whole other story. Um, uh, all happened in basically two and a half years. The 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 the, the, um, 
dot com bubble was very strange times. So I think that's where we're at. Again, I think it's a buy sub twelve dollars. You can probably get you can probably get some good value. You can get some good upside there. I mean, just sell some puts at like ten or eight if you really want to, like if you really want to get nasty um, and just just to participate. But I think there's some value here. I, I think Sherry Redstone, the faster she leaves, the better it is for this company. Uh, I just don't think the Skydance deal as it currently stands is going to go through because there are so many lawsuits ready to blow this thing up. And I think because of that, you can say you can rest safely knowing the hedge funds will not allow this to go through for five for five, 15 cents on the dollar. Basically, uh, if Skydance wants to merge with Paramount. That's fine. But it's got to take the same valuation haircut that Paramount's had. Um, which is probably 80%. I mean, good luck telling Ellison, hey, your equity is worthless because it's got to go all to your shareholders. He won't like that at all. So we'll see what happens next. This has been Sleepy Soul. This video has been a lot longer than I thought. I hope you all have a great, great rest of your day and I hope your Friday is going well. Have a great, great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye.